Hello. This is, this is really, really cramped because it's a new car again. Another car? You. Yes. Where's your glasses? In my handbag. Put your, your snooty glasses on. Uh, hold. We saw four that are. Mm. And now we all have uh, Thor and Loki glasses. They have. Um, well, Omega will be very proud of me. I got Loki instead of Thor glasses. Tumblr will be proud of you. All of the girls in Tumblr love Loki. Well, my wife loves Loki, and that's the important thing. Your wife's also a girl on Tumblr. Sarah, get in the shot. <laughs> yeah, they have Thor because they're all about the Hemsworth. I am all about Hemsworth. A large hairy penis in a suit that he is. I have a picture of him on my bedroom wall in my parents' house. And your parents oh, don't yeah. realize. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thor 2. Okay, first of all... We saw, first of all, we saw a double feature. We just watched Thor and Thor 2 in the cinema. Back to back, which is really useful for picking up on the differences and similarities between the two. But um, before we go into all spoilers and shit, uh, overall feelings? Great. I, I thought it was brilliant. We saw Christopher Hemsworth Topolis again in this movie. Mm. I thought it was wonderful. You saw that in Cabin in the Woods. Well, yes, but... And probably Snow White and the Huntsman, but I haven't seen that, so I yeah, can't confirm. Yeah, I don't even talk about that movie. I didn't like it. Um, best Marvel sequel to date. Oh, by a long shot. Iron Man 2 is, as far as I'm concerned, still the only truly... The closest thing that Marvel has done to a bad movie. Um, it's... Not, it, but Thor, uh, Thor Dark World... There was a lot more comedy in the Dark World. Mm. A lot. For example, at one point Thor gets stuck in the... Oh, wait, wait. Yeah? Spoiling, spoiling until you've got to finish the... Because Sarah hasn't said what she thinks. I thought it was amazing. You have to be louder. I thought it was amazing! Yeah. Very good. <laughs> You're very white to be dressed like that. Me? Sunglasses and a beanie. You, you look like one of the guys from Big Money Hustlers. I don't know what that is. That's the, That's the film that you saw the review of today. Oh! Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, not for, until like early December, late November. Interestingly, I saw an uh, early screening of a Diamond Hagen review today, and I saw an early screening of Thor The Dark World. Yo. I'm not sure how or early. I think it's coming out in most places like tomorrow. Uh, nah. I but, still feel privileged. Yeah, because we saw it on like Tuesday night. <laughs> Um, because it's Wednesday now. But, yeah, we have told our, our views of uh, utter positivity, so if you just wanted the spoiler stuff, there you go, switch it off, go to see it. Now we're going to yeah. spoil you motherfuckers. Rot. Fucking see it. Spoilers. Yes. There's a lot more comedy. Thor gets stuck in the London Underground at one point, and I <laughs> love the London Underground. There's this interdimensional teleportation portal shit going on, and he just appears in, the un in an underground station. He's like, "Excuse me, what way to Greenwich?" And he goes, "Just like this train, three stops." He's like, "Ah," and gets on the train. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not going to be able to get out of there without, you know, without a ticket. He's going to get in trouble. <laughs> oh yeah. He's going to get confused. <laughs> He's going to get arrested. <laughs> oh, um, okay. The villain is played by Christopher Eccleston, and honestly, I think part of him just took the role for the opportunity to try and destroy the South of England. You know, um, for the Americans who don't quite get it, the, the north of England is a little bit like the south of the USA. It's uh, an area, it's got less people on average than the south. It's got less, m people are less rich on average. It's, it's, it's not a center of, it's, yeah, it can be quite maligned and ignored. It's, so... <laughs> it's backwater and sparsely populated, except not to the same extent as the south of the US. It's, and it's very post-industrial. So, um... They hit Margaret Thatcher. So Christopher Eccleston, I got the feel because he's from Manchester. I got the feeling he just wanted to destroy the you know Greenwich and London and all the soft Southerners. <laughs> I, you know what's weird about Christopher Eccleston's performance in this? He both looked and acted more like the Doctor than he did <laughs> as the Doctor. He was doing his received oh. pronunciation accent which would have if he'd used that as the doctor I would have been really fine with and if he had like you know long blonde braided hair and weird eyes and shit as the doctor I would have been fine in fact replace Christopher Eccleston as the doctor with him as Malekith the accursed 
or the Accursed, or whatever you want to call him. Malekith wasn't Accursed. Well, no, that's his name in the comics. Yeah. That would be fucking amazing. And it would be a great improvement. So there was a lot... Especially if he sets Rose on fire and turns her into a monster. Anybody who sets Rose Tyler on fire gets, like, a plus ten in my book. <laughs> but there was a lot of shit online about Thor losing his hand. There was a lot of people talking about that. It's not really in the movie. It would be much better if it was, and that really did happen, because then we would have had, like, Thor 3 with Thor with a Asgardian steampunk robotic hand. Why? What was said online? Oh, they were like, oh, he loses his hand, and it's his big weakness, and... It's like, uh, it's going to be a major plot point in the movie. It's like, no, it was Loki fucking around. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was coming as well. The The fact that it wasn't real, that's the, the bit that's a, that I didn't know about from the internet. So, Thor, uh, well, shit's happening on Earth and there's no physics. It's a bit like that uh, one episode of the Animatrix where things float and shit. And then there's interdimensional portals and kids are having fun dropping things into it. Sometimes they come back, sometimes they don't. <laughs> They're dropping some product placement into it. Yay, Vimto! Vimto! For some reason, everybody's moved to London, because London is the only city in the UK. And we know... It is. It's the only city in the UK, according to Hollywood. Mm. Uh, Except for World War Z. That had Cardiff. That's, that's just a shit. It had Cardiff. It's a long, large, brown shit. I like Cardiff. It is a very good bookshelf. Not Cardiff. No, World War Z. Oh. <laughs> but that features Peter Capaldi as a WHO doctor, a World Health Organization doctor. That's funny. If you say so. The book was good. Peter Capaldi is the 12th doctor, and he got the role right after playing that part. That's why it's funny. I know. I'm Peter Capaldi. I played a WHO doctor, then I played Doctor Who. Ha ha ha. I'm Come. Peter Capaldi, another white man playing the doctor. He's old, He's he can do anger very well, and uh, that's quite happy. Uh, that made me quite happy. I want a black woman playing the doctor. Change it up. I'd like a non-white doctor. I'd love to see a female doctor. Although I do not trust the current people to do a, a female doctor right. Oh no. Um, Peter, but if we have to have another white person, I'm glad it. They're fucking old, and I'm glad that they're striking looking and not not conventionally attractive. He's a doctor with Doctor Who. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's talk I'm about like, Thor. I'm like, what the fuck is the doctor? I'm sitting here racking my head, and I was like, oh, Doctor Who. Yeah, I yeah, don't okay, watch well, Doctor Who. Chris Freckleston, the villain in this week, the doctor. Uh, point. He, he played okay. Doctor Who. I understand. But <sighs> Thor is a magic beanie man who has once again been nerfed from the comics. Because, you know, there's lots of shit that can take down uh, Thor. The, um... Okay, every single way that Thor 1 was weak... Pretty much, this one is a great improvement. Mm. Even down to little things like the costumes in the first one looking like plastic, and in this one they look like metal. And leather, yeah. rather than vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, even a lot of things that Thor did good, this one improves on. Except it didn't have Thor's brilliant shiny helmet. I want that helmet, and I want Chris Hemsworth to walk. Up in front, up and down in front of me, nothing but that helmet. Yeah, I would like the helmet to turn up. Loki's helmet didn't turn up either, which is a bit annoying. Yeah. Mm, yeah I didn't even notice the, that. The very chrome helmet with the silver wings in it. Yeah, he didn't wear it in the second one at all, did he? No, he wore it for about ten minutes in the first one. Oh, you know, hmm. less than that. Yeah. But the, um, although there's a couple of things where this film did not do as well as Thor 1, as far as I'm concerned. The, the interiors of the locations were slightly less Flash gordon -y. It was yeah. one of the good-looking things with the first one was they went full-on fucking Jack Kirby on the interiors. Well, they did it in the costumes, too. It didn't quite work on the costumes, but the interiors, that was the that was fucking beautiful. That could have been 80s Flash Gordon. This one, they were like, oh, let's tone that down as well. It's like, you fuckers, the over-the-top thing that worked. <sighs> Asgard was less alien and more earthy, which I, mm. I agree, it's not as good a thing. Yeah. If, if you're on a fucking weird alien realm, you want it to look like a weird alien realm. Yeah. Like, uh, the... I could understand redesigning the, the Bifrost room, uh, which they didn't, really, for some reason, but they redesigned, like, the throne room. It's like, that didn't get destroyed in the first one. And the throne did get destroyed, and it was suddenly magically back in the next scene. Yeah. And the, um, the Bifrost itself was different, slightly different as well. Well, previously it looked like a neon Lego, clear Lego set with, like, bits of 
of neon electricity going through it, like a like a circuit board. And this one, it's it's more like a big clearish colored uh, sort of thing with like a game of Tetris going on on it. Yeah, well, we can explain that in the fact that Thor destroyed the Bifrost and it had to be rebuilt. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just I preferred the look of the original, and it looked like well, it so, looked weirder. Yeah, which is good for that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. Uh, Mr. Selwig is back, uh, having been possessed by Loki in the previous one and has now gone insane for some reason. Even though he would seem to be perfectly sane after the adventures in a while. What's that? What was wrong with him? Yeah. I was so confused why they just completely fucked him up. Sarah hasn't seen the Avengers. Oh, you haven't? No. He got possessed. He was one of the many guys who got possessed and was but working for Loki. Loki gets a that magic wand that when sense. he pokes somebody in the chest, he takes over their brain. Because I was going, that was one of the things I didn't like. I was like, why have they made him into a creepy weirdo? Yeah, that's, that makes should, sense. You, should, you need to watch the Avengers now. Yeah. You should watch these in order, really. Yeah. Oops. You can avoid Iron Man 2. You don't need. You literally don't I've need to see all that. Them and oh, Iron Man 3 is not bad. Except for the Mandarin. Ugh. They fuck the Mandarin up. Yeah, they do, but that's... that's ben Kingsley cool. Mandarin was perfectly fine, good update of the character, and then suddenly he became... <clears throat> a weird, campy Englishman. A, yeah, joke. It's a bit like... Um, it's... If you've seen, I'm guessing most of you have seen Iron Man 3, but the vlog me and Omega recorded for Iron Man 3 did not turn up on the internet because of problems with the camera, so uh, I just want to explain this now. Really not happy with what they did to the Mandarin. It's a bit like in Tim Burton's Batman if they revealed a quor three quarters of the way through the film that the Jack Nicholson wasn't actually the Joker and the Joker was actually Bob the Goon. It's, it's a bit like showing a dog a squeaky toy that looks like steak and throwing it and the dog realizes it's a squeaky toy. It's just disappointing. And then you got Guy Peter screaming but he is the Mandarin and getting hit, beaten up by Gwyneth Paltrow. No, then a Kai walks on stage and goes, I am the steak. The, yeah, Iron Man 3 was very good in many ways. That was completely misjudged. And it, it looks like they're undoing <coughs> it in some way, so okay, good. Um, what else about this? Um, they replaced Fandral as okay out of all the three of those out of the three warriors three the one warriors three who did not act or look particularly like the one from the comic was hogan the grim hogan the grim okay in the first one he's basically this japanese guy with with a mace hogan the grim in the comics is a fucking mongolian he looks more like he's like a cross between a viking look you know, clothing wise he looks like a cross between a blue viking and uh, and Lemmy from Motorhead, or, or Genghis Khan. Yes, I was going to say Genghis Khan. But Genghis, by the way. Sorry, but they made just made him traditionally Japanese. And this one, they gave him a beard, which is a tiny improvement. But I and mean, they would have been, I would have been fine with him keeping the actor. But at least give him a fucking beard and fur and stuff. But then you know, then they, then for this one, they're like, oh, let's replace one of the Warriors Three with someone who looks different. Let's replace Fandral. Fandral's meant to basically be Errol Flynn, or possibly Carrie Elways if you saw Princess Bride. And they replaced him, who, who, the, first, the guy in the first one did it perfectly. Mm. This guy, vocally he's okay, but visually it looks like it's Matthew Lillard uh, pretending to be English. And he's like, he's a lot less Errol Flynn, he's more like, Ah, oh, I'm just a random person, ha! Huh? The, friend, the skinny friend of the fat guy. With the, with the blonde hair. He's, okay. he's, he's meant to be very, very charming, good-looking, constantly having sex. He's Errol Flynn from the 50s, running around, doing all sorts of swashbuckling stuff. 1950s sort of uh, traditional hero. And in this one, he, he, he might act... He does things that sort of echo that, but he never does... He is not at all believable as that sort of character. Guy in the first one, he was just poofy enough to be Errol Flynn. And to be Errol Flynn, you've got to be severely puffy, but at the same time have sex with a lot of women, and Fandral totally threw, believe me, made me believe that in the first one. Sif was perfect, again. Oh yeah, she's great. And uh, Volstagg's great, although I, I like the way that they, uh, they changed his beard from the first second, because the first one you could tell the bit where the guy's real beard and the fake beard sort of joined. Well, this one it was actually mm. like, hey, we paid attention to the makeup. Do not mistake my appetite for apathy! <laughs> anyway, you said you had some niggles about the movie. The only thing I really, really hated was the whole London stuff. I just hated the fact it was done in London. Why? I don't know. I don't know. It just, for me, it took away from the whole 
thing because it's just so like American and stuff and mm. spacey and then oh hi London but I don't know it's something I've pointed out a few times all movies now need to be set in major today I think that's one of the things that Thor 1 did so well the fact that it was set in a random backwater mm. arched location in the middle of the desert I'm fine yeah. with it, London. This is just the year that London gets destroyed. It got, it got destroyed in G.I. Well, in G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe and Star Trek. And now this, it's just like, although technically Greenwich isn't part of London, it's right beside it. Hmm. But No, I can um, see sort of why they've done it, but just personal for me, well, I just didn't. One of the reasons yeah. that Americans like to do it in London, okay, they want to do it because London is interesting and foreign and different and famous. However, they don't want to be so foreign that they have to deal with a bunch of people who don't speak English. So yeah. that's why they go to. That's why if the, if they're gonna set American films somewhere that's not America, usually it's London is the first choice. Also, that library that was destroyed in this film, Americans, it's older than your country. Hmm. Well, I would have. Um, I, I I'm fine with destroying it. It was very apt that they were doing with Greenwich though, because Greenwich is the official international home of time. Yes, it is. So. Oh. That's great. Uh, you ever uh, heard of Grenade's right. medium time? Uh, GMT, that's our time zone. Oh, right, okay. Because uh, it, cool. the, the concept of time zones was invented during the Victorian era by the British, so they were like, okay, uh, we're go the guy who he decided it, he was he wanted the official time of the planet to be in line with Alexandria in, in Egypt, because that's where the library was in the ancient times. But the British government basically said, no, the official time zone of the planet is going to be here. So that is why, if you ever hear in a science fiction movie, uh, the time on Earth, that is our time. The, the time zone we are in is the official time zone of the entire planet. Mm. Yep. Cool. That's why you're all in minus and plus shit. We're just in time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure if this is connected with where uh, the the start and the end of the day. You know the you know the place the weird place near New Zealand where it's like the 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 first the place it first hits. The, a, a day and then the, the one right beside it where it last hits yes I'm not entirely sure if that's anything to do with the fact that we seem to be about 12 hours from there or not yeah it's because you, you know what you know what I'm talking about the place where you can you literally could be like you can walk backwards in time yeah between you know one you could be on like when the end of you know Wednesday and then go to Thursday Wednesday Thursday Wednesday th they're 24 hours different even they're right beside each other yeah well I think we're about 12 hours from that and I think that's why yeah but uh, I didn't like the ending. I wasn't impressed by the Loki reveal at the end. I knew it was coming at some point, but there just was no build up to that. There was no hints as to how it was done. There was yeah. lots of hints how it was done. Guy turned up with the funeral thing, you know, to try and search for them. Loki killed the guy. He, when he was talking to Odin, he was like, he found a body, and then he's like, and then Odin was like, Loki, and then the guy smirked. And it's like, that's fucking obvious. Yeah, but did he kill Odin? Is Odin dead? Probably. Or prob actually, because it was the dimensional convergence thing, he probably threw him into a convergence and he's probably actually in hell or Muspelheim or something. Oh, this is my one of my complaints. The director in the buzz in this one was saying, this film, we're going to see all of the nine realms. And I was like, oh, excellent. We're going to see all the nine realms. And then this one, it was like, okay, we see Midgard. We see Asgard. We see Vanaheim. We, we even see, see We see Svartfelheim. We even see a little bit of uh, Jutgen, Jutgenheim, and then, so that's five, we go to five of them, and he's like, okay, we're going to go to five of them. We went to Jutgenheim. Yeah, you, I, I call oh. it Jutgenheim. But, so we, we got five there, there's nine. Then, we look into the fucking sky, and we can see, uh, and we see Musfelheim, because that's the one that's really hot, and then, but we never at any point go to Valhalla, and we never go to hell. And I, I am missing one, and I apologize to my fans who are big fans of North, Norse mythology. I, 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 this is terrible of me. I have forgotten one of the nine realms of their mythology. But, yeah, we didn't get to see them. I really expected, you know, at some point for them to use the convergence to let them actually get a glimpse into Valhalla so we could see, um, so we could see Frigga, because, you know, she totally died in battle, yo. Yeah, she's definitely going to Valhalla. Yeah. And we see a bit of hell, so we could see Loki's daughter, you know, we saw Loki, one of Loki's children, you know, the, the eight-legged horse slept near in the first one. Why couldn't we see uh, Loki's other ch child, Hela, or what it, Hel, or whatever you call her, running Hell? I'm not sure if she's called Hel or Hela, because in Marvel Comics she's called Hela, and I'm pretty sure in the actual mythology she's called Hel. Horse fucking monster. 
<laughs> yeah, Loki had sex with horses. In the mythology. Okay. And then give birth to his father's horse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Loki is... Um, pansexual to a degree that most people would make most people go weak at the knees. Hmm. Also, I still consider uh, Son of the Mask to be canon. To the Marvel <laughs> ACU. Well, my, that's, that's a little more controversial than my view that the Eric Bana Hulk is canon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The character of Loki in that movie has not done anything that Loki in this movie wouldn't do. And uh, Oh yeah, I'm thinking, uh, one of the guys who turns up on this is Chris O'Dwoud or Dowd, or whatever you call him from the IT crowd, so I'm thinking that that's actually the guy from the IT crowd, and that's canon for this as well. And just for the hell of it, let's make Father Ted canon for MCU as well. Well, canon, Father Ted's canon to everything. No matter what universe you're on, there's some Irish priest somewhere. Including Scrubs? Yes. Actually, it's Frank Kelly goes drink. That wasn't Frank Kelly. Was I, looked, I found the clip it wasn't. I was told it was. It's a myth. I looked. Up, I also looked up on websites, and they were like, you know, people saying it was, and other people saying it's not. But I looked at the clip; it's definitely not. Why must you ruin my childhood? I'm sorry, I ruined it. But he was in Lex, where he played an Irish priest on a small island, and he was blown up. <laughs> um, go the, see this movie. Do it. Do it now. Yeah, this film better have a bigger fucking box office than uh, than Thor one. Thor, because I believe the the uh, Marvel movies have been like. Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man 2, uh, Thor, Captain America, Avengers, Iron Man 3. <laughs> so um, I'm really hoping for Thor to be like, you know. Yeah. It's also the f fourth time I've seen Thor 1 in the cinema. Hmm. <laughs> I'm that bad. Saw it twice. I saw it twice voluntarily. The third time it was a cinema outage with a youth group I was part of and it was like, uh, what do we see? Don't know. I don't go see Thor. I've seen it twice. Don't care, let's all go. And then, I have seen it in the double feature. You're convinced that was the director's cut, and I am unconvinced, because the DVD I have has scenes so that this one does missing. Okay, well it was a different cut than the one I bit-torrented two weeks ago. <laughs> it was far um, better in the cinema. Mm. I never got to see it in the cinema. It was just so much more I picked up on than I did before. Yeah, they had Matt random floating buildings and stuff. Mm. Oh, um, I, one thing I did spot in the little town, they had an advert for, like, CAD or something, and it was like, an untamed land, journey into mystery, and Thor first appeared in the Marvel comic Journey into Mystery. Oh. I just liked OK Furniture. There was a shop in the first Thor called OK Furniture. It's like, is the furniture good? Nah, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> although, I, I, although I do quite like... Uh, Oh, I've forgotten his name. He plays Selwig. I gotta kick myself later on. His sons are in, like, True Blood, but he, and he was, Stellan Starsguard. that's who it is. I really almost wish that Kenneth Branagh had played uh, Eric Selwig, because then we could have had Kenneth Branagh basically hamming it up, lovying it up, and all, and all these other films running around. Selwig's accent was a lot more pronounced in this film. Because he is Norwegian. Or Swedish. I'm not entirely sure which one Stellan Sarsgaard is. He's crazy. He's the, the crazy the doctor. Huh. Doctor in the underpants. He's, he's, he's crazy. He's talking about Thor and Mjolnir. <laughs> Mjolnir. Mjolnir. It's Mjolnir. I want to know why Stan Lee was in an insane <clears> asylum <throat> in London. If they'd said in America, that would not be quite so jarring, but suddenly you got this elderly New Yorker, uh, you know, Jewish New Yorker guy in the middle of an inner city mental hospital in <laughs> London. Did he have, like, some sort of... Re I, I got it. wasn't. It. He was a police custody. No, no, that was a mental hospital. Well, they went to the police station to get him back. No, yeah, that was a mental what hospital. I thought. It looked like, though, they were going to sign him out of a police station. It, they, were, they, were meant, they were signing him out of a mental hospital, because th th that sort of setup and room, that is not what they do in a police station. I know that. She knows that. It yes. was, yeah, it was just the whole setup. Like, it looked like a guard, and then handing over the stuff in a plastic bag. Yeah. Just, well, they would do that in a hospital as well. Mm. But, um... I, what I, I, okay, headcanon now. Um, there is the theory that Stan Lee is actually the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe representation of Uatu the Watcher, so that he is everywhere watching every all the stories unfold. However, I, this is my headcanon for this version of Stan Lee. He went to London 
and went insane and convinced he was King Arthur and this is like a London version of Jerusalem Syndrome. What do you think? Yeah. King Arthur never went to London. Or at least not in any of the big stories. Well, depending on when you locate Lond uh, King Arthur, uh, if, he, if he was in charge, he most like London would exist, most of them. <laughs> Londinium. Yeah, although the capital of England for in its early history was Colchester. Exactly. Okay, maybe he was Francis Drake. He thought he was Francis Drake then. No, he clearly thought he was Oliver Cromwell. Because he wanted a shoe back, damn it. <laughs> Screw your fun. Stanley <laughs> thought he was some sort of British hero, and that's why he was in the mental hospital. It's like Jerusalem <laughs> Syndrome. I thought the original Thor kind of, it was like Jerusalem Syndrome but more metal. Is what the actual reaction to somebody coming down and claiming to be a Norse god would be. Well, in the, in the Marvel, in the, in the Ultimate Universe, he basically had his own little cult and everything, and everyone was, and he was a sort of an eco-warrior, and everyone thought he was insane until he actually started throwing lightning bolts. Captain Planet. Oh, <laughs> your favourite Chris, uh, Chris Evans. Huh? Captain America. Oh, yes. Chris Evans had a cameo. Just Loki's done Thor walking down the hall and it's like, I'm gonna change shit because I'm bored. <laughs> now you're a woman. <laughs> now I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm Captain America. God bless America. Shut the fuck up, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant, that wee bit. <laughs> <sighs> it's a good movie. Go see the movie. Although I didn't like like spaceship things. I was fine with that. It's sort of a mixture of, you know, you got <clears> medieval and, you know, high science fiction all mixing up, you know, that was Jack curbing it up like a motherfucker. No, I just didn't like the design of them. I liked them. I like crazy arrow things. Yeah, they were like the they were like the droid speeders in uh, Attack of the Clones. Except bigger when you sit inside them. I would say it's um I like weird designs of spaceships, especially ones that are in space, because in space no one can he can hear you be aerodynamic, so you can have random spaceship shapes, and uh, they, they went with the randomness for this one. I like the little bit where it's like, uh, the dimensional portal shit teleports the two guys kissing right beside <laughs> the doctor, and oh, fuck, I can't even remember their names. Darcy's kissing her intern Ian, and she gets teleported beside uh, the doctor and Jane, and it's like, Darcy! Yeah. Yeah. And then the hammer flies by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit like the bit in Rocky Horror, with everyone giving to those names in a ring. Yeah. And oh, the one on the record, Darcy doesn't bother me. I know a lot of people find her really irritating. I don't care. I find Not her... about your opinion. Your opinion is fine. I, I, I'm fine with the character. I find her mildly irritating. She's just so like the. Also, there's definitely <laughs> something wrong with that doctor. He's he's completely mentally broken. They were eating shreddies. What the fuck? What's wrong with that? <laughs> shreddies are terrible. That's your preference. You may as well eat cardboard. Oh, shush. Shush yourself. So... Oh, yeah. Go see this film. No, like... Stop watching this. Close the tab. Go to your local cinema. Sit in a seat. I don't care if you buy anything in the lobby. Just watch it. Do you know who I thought was really brilliant? And I have grown to love the gatekeeper. Yes. I think he is just amazing. Like, yes. he's so loyal, but then he's not. But he's always looking out for the best interests of everybody. Idris Elba. He's just... Oh. He's brilliant. I want to see... Because Marvel owns the rights to Blade now. Mm. Because he was originally a Marvel character. Hmm. So I, I would love to see them reboot Blade with hit with him playing Blade because Blade in the original comics was English. He was not a martial arts guy with a sword. He was much more of a tech sort of just take them down using equipment sort of a guy. Mm -hmm. So if they just rebooted him but they removed everything that made the Blade film character different from the comic and made him more like the comic, he would be so different that you couldn't mistake him for the, for Wesley Snipes, and he'd be perfect. What was his name the, in the character? Heimdall. Heimdall. Ironically, uh, Heimdall is known as the White God. Yeah. In the in the in the Nor Norse. <laughs> I really wanted the. I, I really wanted the after credit scene to be Thor in bed with Jane, and be like, 
I'm doll. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. Huh. I'm a little bit upset that uh, they didn't uh, expand the the gods that turn up in Asgard. Like you know, you couldn't have had Balder turn up. Just saying. Then you'd have to have the Knights of Balder turn up, and they're legion. They could have had like the the famous Norse story where. Um, uh, Freya is gonna marry like, one of the frost giants to create a peace, but then they decide that they'll dress Thor up as Freya and then have this wedding party, and then the, the and then the ice giants are like, ha ha ha, we're gonna totally have you know our leader's gonna have sex with with Freya, who's actually Thor, and then Thor reveals that he's after eating a lot that he's actually Thor and kills them all, you know that sort of thing. You know you would love to see Chris Hemsworth dressed in a Viking wedding dress. I know this. I'd love to see Thor dressed as a woman. Uh, no, I noticed that about the films actually. Freya's combat experience and skill changed a lot between the films. The first one she's like, I've got a sword! And they're like, nah. And she's like, oh. The second one she's like, <laughs> And you're like, wait, wait, I think I'm sure that there's no, not Freya. Freya and Frigga. Frigga. Sorry, I'm talking about Frigga. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she, Freya's or, a different character. No, sorry, Frigga. She's never turned up in the films. Thor's ma. She's badass. Yeah. You know, you can tell she was gonna die, but you know, holy fuck. She got she, badass between the films. She, she went to some training. She kicked the shit out of Malekith. Mm. Good. Good work, Renny Russo. And Alicia Krika turned up. And I was like, why the fuck is the Borg Queen there? <laughs> wow, this is kind of a Star Trek 2. Star Trek 2? No! Wrath of Khan? Yeah. It's, Wrath of Khan's fine. I know, Wrath of Khan's good. But don't put it in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Yay, Alicia Krika. The Queen's sound off was amazing. I want to be buried at that. She turned to me during the Queen's funeral and says, I want that. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so beautiful. I really had to hold back the tears. I was a little bit unimpressed with the fact that they used an arrow to, to light her one. Everyone else should have got the arrow. That was fine with the, everyone firing arrows into their into their long ships to set them on mm, fire from a distance. Yeah. But with, you know, Odin really should just tap the thing and, you know, set it on fire himself using, like, his staff or something. Mm. He's like, I don't need a fucking arrow. <laughs> <laughs> That was beautiful. I didn't get what the white orbs were about. Uh, souls or some shit. Like Valhalla or some crap. Because the, pe mm. the people were like... In the Marvel Universe, the uh, since Valhalla is one of the nine realms, it must exist. Yeah. But the... Um, I want to complain about the original Thor, because... I don't know, I, no one's given any information that I can tell that uh, to explain this, but... Originally, Kenneth Branagh cast Brian Blessed as Odin. But he was replaced by by Anthony Hopkins, and Brian Blessed as Odin is such good casting that I really, really, really want to know what the fuck happened. How do you strip you of your power? And uh, and I cast you out of them. That would be so fucking good. Hmm. <laughs> Thing is, um, Brian Blessed has appeared in so many Kenneth Branagh films because they're really good friends. But that Kenneth Branagh can actually make Brian Blessed act. <laughs> If you ever see Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet, he plays the father Hamlet's dad, oh. and uh, he spends the entire performance whispering. He, and he's, he, while he's whispering, admittedly, he, he's like doing the shouting of whispering. It's like whispering that it's as loud as most people talking, but it's like the guy can get performances out of out of Brian Blessed. And Kenneth so, Branagh, I, I I really hate to say this. I like you as a director, but your name irritates me, and I know that's not something that can be easily fixed, but. I'm sorry. I love Kenneth Branagh as a director. He, he's, uh, I, 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 he's one of my favorite directors just because, honestly, the guy is operatic and insane when it comes to his perform his film oh, choices. I agree. He's an excellent director. I just don't like your he, name. He, he did the first Thor. He, uh, he also directed like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and uh, the. Ah, what do you call it? Uh, Dead Again, which is on my review list. Uh, he's currently doing like the new. Um, uh, Hunt for an October guy, I can't remember his name, the character, and he's doing like a version of Snow White. He's just crazy with his choices. Mm. He's like, I'm going to direct a Shakespeare movie. He, he first made his name in the 80s with a, an adaption of Henry V. No, sorry, no, Henry VII. One of the Henrys. Okay. And, uh, and it, it won Oscars and he was considered the new Laurence Olivier. And Henry went, the Hoover? Then he went completely insane. 
because his choices of directing he was like, I'm going to pretend to be American and do a reincarnation sort of, you know, melodrama. Then later on he was like, I'm going to do another Shakespeare movie. I'm going to do the entire of Hamlet, the entire four hour length, uh, you know, including the hour and a half that most people cut out. And I'm going to cast everyone from Charlton Heston to Billy Crystal to Robin Williams to Richard Attenborough and to Robin Brian Blessed. Yeah. Rob, Richard Atten Sir Richard Attenborough turned up with for one line. It, the cast of that Hamlet is, I mean, it's like he was like, I want to make an epic, epic, epic fucking war movie and I'm going to wrap it around Hamlet. <laughs> but, and it's fucking amazing. But then he was like, I'm going to make Love's Labor Lost into a movie because I love my Shakespeare. How can I do that? I'm going to turn it into a 1930s screwball musical. And he did. And he was like, I'm going to cast one of the guys from Bone Kickers and Matthew Lillard. And then he was like, I'm going to adapt the magic flute by Mozart. Not the not a play or anything. I'm going to adapt the fucking opera. And I'm going to have a scene where a person leaps into a giant set of lips for no reason at all and set it in World War One. The guy's insane, mm. but wonderful. It's like I'm going to adapt. Uh, I think it's As You Like It. One oh, of the uh, I, I read that. Do you I think see it was the As You English? Like It. He, he he adapted one of them. He was like instead of like setting it in the in like medieval France or you know Shakespearean time, he's like I'm going to set it in 16th century Japan. Why? Because fuck you. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm Kenneth Branagh, I don't give a shit. You should write him a love letter. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of just did. The way he, um... Kenneth Branagh, if you're watching this, please leave a comment. <laughs> it's, and it's like, this is why he cast Idris Elba as Heimdall as well. Because he's like, I'm doing a Viking gods. I'm gonna cast a black guy just to annoy the racists. There were black Vikings. Yeah, yeah, there were the Blue Men of, of Dublin, but this did actually annoy the the, 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 the racists, which is just wonderful. Well, there's nothing like annoying racists. Oh, yeah! But yeah, and Kenneth Barney, he's from Belfast. Mm hmm And yeah. Did you know that? No. Da -da -da. Oh, yeah, he, he did a, he, he did his version of Frankenstein. We love that! Sorry, I'm talking about Branagh again. He did an adaption of Bra Frankenstein, which was very, very accurate to the book. And then he cast John Cleese as a dramatic part where he gets killed tragically. And then he cast Robert De Niro as the monster. And made the monster eight foot tall. Robert De Niro was like Niro? five nothing. Yes. Yeah. He was like, I don't care. I'm Bro Kenneth Branagh. I'm going to play Henry, you know, sorry, Victor Frankenstein constantly shirtless. <laughs> I love Robert De Niro. She does. And I he, do. He played Gilderoy Lockhart in Harry Potter. Who? Hey? The the vain guy in the second Harry Potter movie. Can't remember. You know the teacher. He's really shit. And he's blonde. Like, You're hey. gonna help me sign my fan mail. Ha ha ha. Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. That's him. Okay. So yeah, go to see Thor. Yeah. yeah. And look up some of Kenneth Branagh's work apparently. Yeah. Don't. Exp they're not all great. Some of them are, but they're mostly fucking eccentric, and he doesn't give a shit, which is always a good thing. I would much rather have a bunch of films which the director does what the fuck they like, some of them will be bad, <coughs> than a bunch of ones which are made to try and please people. Because the ones that are good are going to be really fucking good, or at least interesting, which is better than boring and good. Yeah, better than, uh, this, this is a safe bet that will make its money back. Yeah, decent and boring is much worse than interesting and boring. So interesting and, uh, and decent. Decent and boring is worse than interesting and a bit shit. Yeah. But anyway, it is five to three. Last words, sir? Go and say it. That's really good. Last words? Really, really fucking good. Um, oh, Benicio Del Toro as the collector. He Okay, we, we saw a clip from Guardians of the fucking Galaxy. Benicio Del Toro is basically playing the villain from Skyfall, as reimagined by like 1980s heavy metal magazine. Yay! There's two. Oh, there are two uh, credit scenes. There's one halfway through, and then there's another one after the credits. A lot of yeah. idiots. There there's a left. mid credit and an after credit. Don't yeah. walk out. A lot of people left. Stupid people. Yeah. The last one's worth it. The last one's worth it. Uh, I, I, would you like me to spoil it for you? No, me? don't. I won't spoil it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>